has there been a week like this that you can remember in New Zealand rugby history? Every, all the talk, the changes, it's all happened. Well, admittedly, being away, I thought I, I would have bypassed all this. And by the time <laughs> I sat back down here this week, no we would chance. have been talking about NPC and South Africa, let's reset. But I don't think there has been. I, I think it's, it's been a really tough week. I've, I've actually quite... Um, as it sort of panned out now with the news today, I like the way Ian Foster's sort of handled it in the later, in the later stages, but there has been some big heat um, these last couple of weeks. Go well, on. seven days, considering what we talked about last Sunday night and we were dissecting in depth what had happened through the performance of the test, but now we've got a different coaching structure in the All Blacks. We've got different people, Kirsty, who are going to South Africa. We've yeah. got different influences. Joe Smith, part of the preparation, the selection of the squad... I think there's some, some wonderful, wonderful discussions that will happen in the next two weeks before this test. Oh, it's going to be huge, isn't it? As you say, two people out from the All Blacks setup. A new person that has come in. We're going to talk about all of that, plus a whole lot more on the show as well. Yeah, massive. I, I, can't, I, I can't wait for us to look at and, and dissect the, the team, but more importantly, it's time for us now to hear from Ian Foster. Earlier on, I had the opportunity to talk to Fozzie. I asked him about the circumstances, the process, and I suppose the need for a change inside the coaching team. Yeah, thanks, Goldie. Uh, yeah, big week, you know, and, and I think the number one thing is that we, you know, we've come off a series that we didn't get what we wanted, and um, and, and that's always bitterly disappointing as, as a coach and as a team, and so I guess the soul searching done after that's, you know, 100%, I guess, related to that. We, um, we, oh, I, I finished the series and, and the changes we've made are ones that I, I think that, that the team needs. And, and, and so this is about what is the best thing for the, for this all black team to go forward and play better. And, you know, we, we, like I said, we didn't get what we want. I basically had a process that I said to our leaders and senior players, you guys go away and have a think about where we're at and the things that we have to move and what give me any messages that you feel that I need to hear. And they did that. They also did a similar process with New Zealand um, and with New Zealand rugby as, as is normal after a series. And, and out of that, I think we've got a clear mandate that there's a strong belief in the direction we're going, but there's, is a feel that we actually need to get a couple of new voice, get a new voice in there, and, and make some changes to get the to get the gains that we really want to get. And and you know, part of their their feedback was strong about their own leadership and things that they need to do better. It wasn't just about uh, management, and but there there was a clear message about a couple of things. And so, therein lies the rationale for the decisions that were made. So what are those direct responsibilities that Jason Ryan will take on board right now? Look, Jason comes in as a forward coach and, you know, that we've got, um, you know, a lot of belief. The players have a lot of belief in, in, in him as a, as a person and as a coach. He's done a great job, particularly the last couple of years with the Crusaders in that area. And then we've also seen him transfer that into Fiji. And, you know, I think we saw the benefits of, that international experience with him last year and this year. So he'll come in, and, and that's his main focus at the start. I mean, we we need to get Jason in here and actually start working with him to see where that role, I guess, develops. But, you know, primarily and early on, he's going to have a clear focus around the line out, our driving play and, and, and defence in that, in that particular area. In regard to the coaching group and the management team, from time to time the All Blacks have known to shuffle the cards is to change the responsibilities. Does that mean you've gone through that process and will there be a different responsibility for different coaches? Look, uh, it's we, we. I think right now, Goldie, that you know we've got Scott. He's going to remain in defence and he's doing a good job, but we've got to keep working hard on that. We've got Fiki with the scrum. Jason comes in. In terms of the forwards, um, I'm going to do in the short term more of a role with with, with the backs, and in behind that, I've got our original plan of, you know, now's the time that Joe Smith was due to start with us as a selector, but also as a an analyst strategist and behind the scenes and in particularly that attack side of the game. So he's working. Uh, well, was about to start work a lot with with me behind the scenes there and along with him and Andrew Strawbridge from a skill side, I think that we've got a nice balance in that area. Fozzie, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your honesty and your time. Please prepare well, travel safe, and look forward to seeing you in South Africa. 
Thanks, Goldie. Appreciate it. Yeah, and awesome to be able to get that interview. So thank you so much, Ian Foster, for coming on and speaking. Uh, very important to get your voice out there. And he speaks with a lot of confidence as well. After so much commentary during the week, his uh, head uh, was on the chopping block. That's what people were saying. Sam Keynes as well, the assistant coaches too. Now we've got Plumtree gone, Brad Moore gone, and we've got Jason Ryan has been added. Have we got what we wanted? Is this what they need? Well, it looks like the players have got what they wanted, is what I took from that. He talks about the players, the group... And, um, look, uh, my first initial reaction is, were these, you know, the, these heads circling around that chopping block before the series, you know? Has this just emphasised something that might have been there beforehand? I like that, the fact you asked that last question, Goldie, about the changing room, because he has come out, and, and admittedly, he's probably come out a little bit more stronger this week, and it sounds like he's a bit more confident because he probably has got the, the changing room. Now, I look at those players. It's so easy to be able to have that backing. But now the challenge is that you don't overdo it and give too much power to the players. So I like the, the assertiveness from Ian Foster at the moment. But now, you know, what, he, what does he do? He needs to simplify things. He needs to sim you know, be, be real simple about the game plan ahead. Because from what we've seen in those last you know, three games, there was uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainty amongst you know, the, the, possibly that leadership group that he's, um, that he's wanting to get you know, that, that confidence from. And when you go... You know, in international games, you want world-class players. And when I wrote a few names down because it said Taylor, Whitelock, Kane, Retallick, Savia, Smith, you know, um, Barrett, you know, Bowden Barrett. And I think Will Jordan now fits into that frame. I mean, we're very light on world-class players when it comes to our backs. But what's more concerning is, you know, that, that assertiveness that we're looking for and the confidence um, is amongst, in the, the uncertainty is amongst our world-class players. And that's perhaps now their voice to say, hey, well, hey, we need some direction. You know, this is why we've given this sort of, I suppose, um, you know, feedback. Uh, we, back, we back fuzzy, but we also need a bit more simplistic, um, a, a simplistic game plan or strip everything back so we can go. There's no doubt in my mind, I think we've got the players. We just need direction and a better direction going forward. Bossy, do you think when he said in the short term he's going to take care of the backs, does that suggest to you that they may have some other plans going forward. Look, I don't know if it would be fair now, they've made a change, they've made adjustments, would it be fair now after two games in South Africa to then put them under review again when clearly they're looking for a shift in their forward pack? Jason Ryan has come in to give them a little bit of expertise there. He's connected to a number of those experienced yeah. players you talked about. But when you hear that, are you thinking, you know what, they're also working maybe towards something else? And look... Joe Smith, I understand, doesn't want to be away from home. He wants to be close to his family. So that, is that a long-term option? And, or is he just doing the role he wants to do right now with the All Blacks? Yeah, and I think you're right, he's doing the role he, he wants to do. It's interesting they said the players, you know, his role's changed a little bit. Did they like the, first, the only week they had with him before that Irish test that they won? Did they, they get confidence? They analysed it and he's changed to be an analyst. And that tells me he's going to be a tack coach. If you're going to be an attack coach as well, you need to be able to direct your backs. Where, the, where you want them to set up the next phase, where you want them to attack. And that Joe Smith's always been a very, very good attack coach, a very good backs coach, and I think that's where his strengths was as a head coach. I, I, temp, uh, Fozzie says he's doing it temporary. I, I think when he comes back in the, the mould fully, that he'll probably take over that role. I'm, there's a lot of other names floating around uh, that might be that backs person, but my experience with Joe is that that's where he's really, really been strong, and that's how he leads the team's attack. The interesting thing for me, Kirsty Mills, as well, is that I look at it, and you mentioned about where the players are at and the way that they're performing, and we've talked so much on this show about not having time. I'm a bit the other way. I think we've got a little bit more time than we think. Mm -hmm. We've got an end-of-year tour we can go on to continue to develop players and work on them, because the group of players we've got right now that have been selected for the Rugby Championship, that's it. That that's the group of players we're going to have in the next 12 months going towards the Rugby World Cup. So if they need to make a shift, there are test matches at the end of this year, there are test matches before the Rugby World Cup, and then remember, there's usually three or four test matches during the World Cup we get to build towards the knockout phases. So if we are getting to the back end of the Rugby Championship and we're still searching for things, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing because we've started the process of change. And that's why I think, to answer your, your earlier question before about, you know, a, a review happening after South Africa, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing uh, because, you know, it's sort of, we can then, you know, go back and say, are we heading in the right direction because we have got a little bit of time. Those group of players, like I said, I've got no doubt in my mind, we've got a good group of, group of guys and some excellent players that can go win us, you know, the, a Rugby World Cup. The key now is 
how are we coaching these guys? What game plan are we actually going into this game so we don't get guys that are like unsure about where, where everything's happening? Because when they're unsure about that, confidence goes out the window. They become individualistic, and then they're sort of unsure about you know where to go, and pressure comes on. We've never seen that in an all-black team. Well, this guy, Sam Kane, his leadership, uh, his position in the team has been questioned this week, hasn't it? But Enforce has come out strong. He's the guy. Yeah, and I agree with that. Like, and to back up what Millsy said, you've got your leadership group. If they're getting confusing messages and they're not confident in their core role, it makes the leading and the reacting and all that stuff that you see actually come out in the field, it makes that a lot harder. So uh, if they're not confident in what the group they had or the coaching staff they had, then that... that that's amplified in those situations. And it rubs off too on the younger players. You know, then they're looking for direction as well. I mean, we've got quality players. We've got, as I said, we've got world-class players over half of the team. We've just got to make sure we're on the same page. I'm going to say this, and, and this is symptomatic in so many different sports that are dealing with this now, right? This is a new generation. This is not the team that won the 2011 and 2015 Rugby World Cups. And there are a number of guys who hung on to 2019, tried to get us there and get us across the line. Your Ben Smiths, your Ryan Crotties, you know, they hung in there. They were there right to the very end. Still performing well as All Blacks. But the reality is we are transitioning this new young group you're talking about and trying to get them to a level of winning a Rugby World Cup. How long did it take that group, that group, through the 2000s to find a way to win a Rugby World Cup at home in 2011? So I'm not sure we're being entirely fair with the group of players either, given the standard they're being held to. They're being held to a team that was remarkable. Yeah. The interesting part for me is, though, essentially the backroom staff and all the staff have come from that environment, the previous one. And you've got to find a way to motivate and bring together not just the senior players, but the young guys who are now trying to become and establish themselves as international world-class players. And in this environment, that's incredibly challenging. This is a totally different, it's a totally different era. Yeah. And we went through the same thing, you know, 2004, 2005, we sort of changed. There's a lot that's, that's always said, you can't reinvent the wheel, don't reinvent, you have to, because these group of players are totally different. They need, they need to find their own rock action leader. For, you know, I hear this all the time throughout the, the schools. And you're like, that's, that's now old. We, we need to reinvent what we're actually trying to do. The pod system, you know, we, we change once again. We haven't done that since that, that era. And that's why I think when you look back at, at the review that happened last year, that was why I was a little bit disappointed with the NZR because look at where, where Razor Robinson was. This is where he's great. But these are different athletes. These are different beasts. These are different sort of you know rugby players that you've got to try and motivate. So you've got to do them in a different way compared to what it was in the 2000s. We found a very it took us a very long time to, to to win those rugby world cups through a lot of pain. So these guys have got to find something different. Yeah. And Andy Farrell has advanced what Joe Smith created, right? He's moved it forward. He's taken it. You know, so all of a sudden, Joe Smith created something in Ireland. It then took someone else right now. It appears as though he's taken it to another level, Bossy. And I think you're exactly right. He's put his own spin on it. He's changed it a bit, you know what I mean? Because uh, he had to. He, he's, it wasn't Joe Smith. This wasn't his campaign. He had to put his own spin on it. And I think with these new coaches coming in, they're going to have to put their own spin on it. But I go back to your point, and, and we have to make these changes, but do we expect that to happen in these two weeks in South Africa? So we talk about the pressure they've been under. These next two weeks, it's probably been, it's going to get harder because what do we expect uh, here in New Zealand? We expect them a, a change is to a win. Yeah. But uh, realistically, they've got uh, what, a week, two weeks to, cha to change that and go and get two victories in, um, in South Africa, sorry. Otherwise, we're not satisfied.